Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about MIG welding wire size. And the size of wire that you run affects how much amperage goes into your weld, how fast you can weld, it affects how much spatter you get, how smooth your arc is. As a welding engineer, as much as I'd love to just talk about the theory, I think it'll be better to go through some examples. So I have some coupons here ranging from uh, 1 16th of an inch, clear up to half inch thick plate. I have 030 wire uh, loaded into here, which is really good. I use it a lot for like 16 gauge square tubing, which is what I use for a lot of things. 200 inches per minute, um, that's gonna be good for 16 gauge. It already has the voltage set for me and it'll give me right around 77 amps. So 030 wire is the thinnest that we're gonna look at today and it's a perfect match in my opinion for 16 gauge or 1 16th of an inch thick material runs really nice and smooth there. If you're doing thinner stuff than that, you can go down a size or uh, you can get away with a size thicker as we'll do in a minute on this thickness, but it's a perfect match in my opinion and runs so smooth. All right, so let's take a quick look at the weld. Overall, not too bad. Now that I'm editing this, I'm kind of embarrassed that the first weld that comes up is by far the worst. I was all over the place with my angle, but hopefully you can look past that to see that the process itself, as far as wire size, ran real well for this thickness. Now I've moved to some 1 8 inch thick plate, and in doing that I turned up my wire feed speed as well as the voltage to a more appropriate level so I get some more amps. And because I did that with the same size wire, each time it short circuits out against the base metal, you're going to have a little bit more of a uh, violent arc. And so you might get a little bit more spatter. Now, 1 8 inch is still well within the acceptable range for this, um, but it's right at the top end of where I like to run 030 wire on the regular. All right, so once again, a smooth bead, not a lot of spatter, but there, there was a lot more uh, popping. Let's try some quarter inch and see what happens when we push this 030 wire up in those quarter inch uh, settings. So here with the quarter inch thick, um, it, you're getting a lot more spatter. You can see there's more sparks and it's just a whole lot more aggressive because you're just pushing so much amperage through that little wire and it's uh, you know just a little bit too much. They call that current density is the technical term, but basically it's just a lot of amps for the cross-sectional area of wire. So for that reason, it's really not ideal. Don't get me wrong, I've welded plenty of quarter inch with 030 wire, it can be done. Uh, I'm just saying it's maybe not the very best fit. In all reality, that's still a nice clean bead. You know, you can run 030 on this quarter inch thick material and it was running hot, but there's a lot more aggressive popping. So it'll be interesting to see how this does with a little larger diameter wire here in a minute. Hey, I'm just gonna jump in here for a minute. The way that I support these videos is through the sale of my online courses. And if you are just getting started out, uh, these can save you months or even years of uh, time just by watching YouTube videos because I break things down into very small baby steps with practice exercises to reinforce one principle at a time. I keep them as affordable as possible, no subscription, just a one-time payment. You'll find them linked in the description below. I promise they'll help you out. If not, I'll give you your money back with no questions asked. Now I'm gonna switch over to the big MIG here. I have some 035 here, and we'll also load in some 045 in a minute for the upper level of thickness that we'll look at. Now the dynamic of the arc is pretty similar on these two machines, but notice with the larger diameter wire, it's recommending a much lower lower setting, right around 130 inches per minute for 16 gauge. So a little bit of a difference there because the larger the diameter of wire you have, the more amperage you get for a given wire feed speed. Now the other machine could have handled 035 wire just fine. I'm just out of eight inch rolls and so I'm using this one. Um, here is what it looks like when you're at the bottom end of the range for a wire diameter. It still runs just fine, and this machine's as smooth as any, but you just don't get quite the same smooth arc when you start pushing to a larger diameter wire. You just can't cheat physics in that way. Now, not that this isn't within the acceptable range, but for me, I prefer a smaller diameter wire when I'm running this thinner sheet metal. Now it still works good, it just isn't quite as smooth when you have a larger diameter wire on this thinner plate, and the 030 is definitely more at home here on this 16 gauge. Now 035 wire is really in the sweet spot for 1 8 inch thick material like this. The arc reminds me a lot of that 030 wire on 16 gauge. It just runs smooth and easy with 
almost no spatter, and that's especially helpful when you're welding out of position. Now we ran both 1 16th and 1 8th with uh, both types of wire, and clearly it can do it, but they do have their sweet spot. So whatever you're doing the majority of, that's really what I'd recommend buying your wire for, and then you can stretch it a little bit when you need to. Now here I'm pushing a lot more wire feed speed to get my amperage up, and I'm also running a little bit higher voltage. And so you do have more going on, but there's not nearly as much spatter as I had with the 030 wire. And I have more confidence in this weld because I'm just able to push that amperage in there. So 035 runs great on quarter. Now the 035 on this quarter inch with those settings, you really get that bacon frying sound. And it is a nice uh, smooth arc and a smooth bead. So 035 up to quarter inch, really good. Let's go ahead and try it with some half inch and really push this wire. So I'm just running this half inch thick steel here to show the versatility of this wire size 035. It ran 16 gauge clear up to this half inch thick plate. Now I'll give a little disclaimer this machine is more powerful than your typical 200 amp machine and we're pushing more amperage than you'd be able to do. So the 300 amp HTP is really making it possible, but to show the capability of this diameter of wire, I think it's a good exercise. Now overall, the bead looks good. There's often questions about lack of fusion when you're running short circuit MIG on thicker plate like this, and it's a valid concern, but if you have enough amperage and you're pushing a big enough wire, it can be done. We'll cross section it later just to put everybody's mind at ease. Now I'm going to switch over for 045 wire. I uh, recognize that a lot of 200 amp class machines aren't capable and don't really have a need of running 045. And that's fine if you have one of those. You can see how versatile the 035 was already. But for those who do have a bigger machine like this uh, HTP or like a Miller 252, um, this is what you're able to do with 045. You can get a lot of amperage in there and get a nice smooth bead with a lot of uh, penetration when you get onto thicker material. So let's do a little comparing here. So this was 030 on quarter inch. Not too bad, but uh, definitely was at the top end of the wire. This right here is that 035, still pretty good. But when you start getting into the 045 right here, you ignore the start where I was still dialing in the settings, but right here, it is, you know, that is what I like to see in a weld. Nice and smooth. Now, a lot of guys will run 030 wire and they'll run about the same settings at 200 inches per minute, like I was running on the 16 gauge and do a whole bunch of loop-de-loops. And that's a whole art in and of itself. And I'm not saying that that can't be strong or that it doesn't look great, but for me, I have a lot of confidence in a weld like this. So I think that 045, those larger wires, if you have a machine that can push it, not all machines will, but if you do, then you get to quarter inch and above, really good pick. Let's go ahead and try that 045 on half inch here. Now here I'm running 045 wire on half inch thick plate. This is good and hot. And you know, there are some inherent limitations to short circuit MIG as a process when it comes to thicker material. However, often it's just a limitation of smaller machines. And here where I'm running a bigger machine and I have bigger wire to push that in, it's going pretty well. So there we go with that 045. That was a good hot weld. And uh, you know, here on half inch plate, whether short circuit MIG is the best process for thick material is a topic for another video. I actually made one on that not long ago. But uh, this right here is about as good as you're going to do. And that 045 wire really helps out a lot. Now, if you compare that to the 035, you can see how this has a little bit more of a crown to it and isn't tied in quite as well as that 045 right there. Here's a cross section of how the welds penetrated on that half inch thick plate. And I wanted to check it out since I'm running short circuit MIG on thick steel to make sure that it did penetrate down into the joint. And in this case, it dug in pretty good. There's a really wide range of material thicknesses you can weld with a given wire size, but here are my picks for the ideal. 1 16th to 8th inch thick, I'd say run 030 wire. From 1 8th to quarter inch thick, run 035. And over a quarter inch and a half, I'd say go for 045 if you have a machine that can push enough amperage. 
Hey, thanks a ton for tuning in. If you enjoyed this or learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below or leaving me a comment. And just a reminder that I have links to uh, some of the equipment I use as well as my online courses in the description. We'll see you next time.